Ahoy my friends, Ryder here and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today I'm going to be doing another one of my updated summon battle guides. This is going to be for the very hard Ramu fight and I'm going to be bringing a new team into this one that I haven't used before to fight Ramu in an attempt to help new players beat these new summons. Alright, so I am going to go down here to the trial of Ramu very hard. Alright. Um, and I'm going to walk you guys through the fight. This fight is probably, in my opinion, or at least for me when I first started playing this game, was the hardest one between Ifrit, Ifrit Shiva, and Ramu. Uh, but if you have the right setup, it's not going to be too hard at all. I'm not going to be running this with a water imperil weapon, so no black whiskers. However, if you do have that uh, water imperil weapon, black whiskers for Zack, it's going to really make this fight a lot easier. Um, other than that, I am going to be running this with Red 13, Glenn, and Matt. And I am running this with Glenn with his new Limit Draw costume. I figured this is probably one of the ones most people are likely to have in comparison to the Cloud Maritime Sword slash Maritime Outfit, considering that was so long before. On top of that, the weapon is only level 80 and only at OB1. So even if you have a base five-star version of it, it's still gonna work pretty well. If you don't have this costume set, just go for a strong uh, Watera Blow build or just plug in your strongest water weapon. Matt has one, Red 13 has one. As you guys can see here, I'm just running an AOE 340% magic water damage build on Red 13. And we're just gonna be basically uh, focusing on debuffing Ramu, uh, his physical defense so Glenn can do more damage, making sure we lower his magic attack when he buffs it, um, and essentially just trying to do as much damage as fast as we can while breaking his sigils. If you can manage to break all his sigil breaks in this fight, the fight is going to be incrementally easier. And as you guys can see here, he does have two sigils, Triangle and Diamond. However, this is not one of those fights where I would say it's close to being required to bringing an actual weapon with a diamond sigil break. You are going to be able to break this um, with at least three people running triangle sigils, or in this case, I'm running Red 13 with the Noble Caller. It does have an AoE 340% magic water damage, but what's nice about it is that it does have a triangle sigil break here. So because of that, I can drop a triangle sigil on Matt and replace it with a D Faith just in case he needs to help debuffing. Now, in terms of the battle itself, you are going to be starting off fighting two Electro Rangdas. They start the battle by casting Thunder Dance. So you're going to want to kill at least one of them as fast as possible before this gets off, as it can do a lot of damage. Um, in the second fight, you're going to be fighting one Moth Slasher and two Thunder Bombs. The bombs are only really dangerous when you get them under half health. So I do recommend taking out the Moth Slasher first and then focusing on the bombs afterwards. The trick with these bombs is to, before you knock them past the halfway point, um, to save up your ATB so that once they start to cast Burst, which is essentially self-destruct, you can kill them before that happens. But the only danger in that happens when they pass the 50% HP threshold. Last but not least, we have the boss himself, Ramu. He is weak to water and resistant to thunder, so we won't be bringing anything thunder related into this build. His immunities are poison, darkness, silence, stun, fatigue, and fog. However, he is not immune at all to physical magic attack breaks or physical magic defense breaks. Um, his lightning potency changes based on the force gauge lightning. The gauge can be de uh, depleted with damage. Um, it doesn't look like you even need water damage to deplete this gauge based on what this is saying, but normally that is the case, so we're just going to have to see how it goes in the battle. During storm charge, the gauge fills quickly. Alright, so we are going to be focused on keeping down that gauge. It is a similar kind of mechanic between Shiva and Ifrit as well, so you guys should be comfortable and used to it by now if you've been following my updated summon guide battles. Alright, other than that, let's get into the build itself. My team for the day is sitting at a power of 185,000 under the recommended of 192,000. I am running Red 13 with just his base costume right here. 
Um, I did equip Sled Fang for the instant cast, fast charging, physical magic attack break, just in case we need to lower it before he gets off a big attack. In his, in his main hand, I'm equipping the Noble Caller level 70 OB3 for the Water Gut attack R ability and water potency, plus the fact that it has a triangle sigil break on there. So if you can slot a weapon with a triangle sigil break, it is going to help you greatly in this fight. In his offhand, I do have the Junk Caller at OB4. It deals 370% physical non-elemental damage and breaks magic attack. So very important for lowering Ramu's offensive capacity. On top of that, it breaks to mid on the first cast, but then high on the second cast, which is really great. Um, all right, moving over to Glenn. I will be using Glenn's Limit Break Draw costume, but like I said, if you don't have this, or even if you just have a base five-star version, or even just the weapon, it's gonna do pretty good damage against Ramu. But essentially in this slot right here, you are going to want to, I'm actually gonna switch Matt into the middle just because I like uh, controlling the healer uh, primarily before the other characters. I think that's the easiest thing to do in Ever Crisis. Um, but essentially, you know, we have our backup DPS with Red 13 and the magic attack breaker, right? And that's uh, through Limit Break and his second offhand weapon. Glenn is going to be our DPS, but essentially you're going to want to plug in a character that is going to be your primary water DPS. So choose the character with your strongest water attack, whether that's Zack or Cloud or Glenn or Matt, anybody. That's going to be your primary DPS. Focus on them. Now his first weapon is going to be Stream Slasher, which is going to do 600% physical water damage. It has great R abilities for anyone that pulled this weapon, and I'm only using it at level 80 OB1. In his offhand, I am going to be using the Piece of Cake, and this is going to be for a physical defense break. Throughout this fight, Ramu is going to buff his own physical defense in order to try and mitigate our own. This is because Ramu originally came out shortly after the Maritime Sword, which is a physical water potency weapon. So Glenn is going to be doing his own debuffing. Not always ideal for a DPS to be doing their own debuffing, but in certain circumstances, you don't have the option not to. All right, so this is going to go to high on the first cast. However, if you don't have it at OB6, it's still going to work. You're just going to have to cast it twice instead of once. And in his limit break right here, we are using Blazing Onslaught. It's only at level 7 and Glenn is only at level 69. But more importantly than weapons or anything, you guys, uh, the most important thing is getting your characters up to level 70. So that is going to give you the most incremental growth to your characters, their strength, their capacity to win battles. So do that first, then focus on building the team. All right, now to look at the Materia, I do have a Cura in the first slot for every character. We don't need to worry about fatigue, poison, or fog in this battle, so Curas are going to work fine. In Red 13's second slot, we have a Watera, then we have a Watera Blow for Matt, and for Glenn, we have a backup Defaith right here, just in case we need to lower magic attack. Then we have our Sigil Breaks right here. We have the Triangle Sigil Break on Red 13, we have a defaith on Matt because Red 13 has the Triangle Sigil boost. And then we also have a Triangle Sigil on Glenn. So two characters running triangles. You're capable, you're able to do that because of this support material right here. And then that opens up a slot for Matt. If you don't have a Triangle Sigil boost, you are going to want to equip three Triangle Sigil breaks. All right, now to go into the actual character builds themselves, this is Red 13. He is sitting at 57k power, 6.7k HP. His physical attack and magic attack are roughly the same, even though I have him focused on magic attack in this fight. He's got 127 physical defense, 153 magic defense. His abilities are as shown here. All right, so focusing on water potency, attack, magic defense, and magic attack for him. And here, if you guys wanted to check out his abilities to compare with your own. His sub-equipments are going to be the Thousand Waves, so HP and Magic Defense. The Bahamut Rapier, which can be farmed from the Bahamut Summon Battle, Magic Defense, Magic Attack. And the Chariot Wheel, which is a new weapon from the Knights of Judgment event, which boosts Magic Attack and Water Potency. So you are going to want to be focusing on Red 13, HP, Magic Defense, Visi er, magic attack and water potency. Those four things are the most important thing. All right, now going over to Matt Winsard right here, he is at 61K power, 7.4K HP, 2.2K physical attack, 111 physical defense, 155 magic defense, and healing is his primary stat here. Matt is our main healer slash off buffer. 
He has 2.2k healing right there. His R abilities are as shown here. Magic defense being an important one, HP and healing. Other than that, nothing else is really super important for him with healing being the number one priority in his kit while also keeping his HP at least above 6k. All right, so for his sub weapons, I do have the guard stick equipped just because it has the highest um, heal R ability stat in the game. So this is a great weapon to level up and wishlist because oftentimes you can just use this for a healing sub weapon and it will do the job of two of them combined. Plus it boosts his limit break potential as well. So very good. Um, then I'm also running the Chocobo staff here for the healing slash magic defense. Like I said, healing magic defense are the number one most important things for Matt followed by HP. All right. And last but not least, we have the Bahamut Knuckles right here for magic defense and HP, which can be farmed from the Bahamut summon fight. Last but not least, we have Glenn Lodbrook right here. 65k power, 8.1k HP, 2.4k physical attack, 132 physical defense, 125 magic defense. His R abilities are as shown here. The ones that are important would be phys uh, boost HP, physical attack, magic defense and water potency here so these are the ones that you're going to want to focus on for glenn since he is a dps you do want to make sure he can stay alive but then also do damage at the same time his sub equipments are going to be the beach parasol for the hp magic defense the buster sword for the hp and attack and lastly the orthodox raven for the boost hp and water potency right here like i said Fill him in for HP, physical attack, water potency, and magic defense, and you should get along just fine. All right, guys, that is going to conclude our team build for the Ramu Very Hard fight. I'm not going to waste any time. We are going to get into this right now. I'm going to show you guys how to beat this for yourselves and unlock Ramu as a summon for your builds. All right, so at the beginning here, I'm just going to speed it up. Like I said, we're going to take down one of these Rangdas as fast as we can right here before he starts to cast. And make sure you block that next attack right there if they get it off. All right, now going into the second battle, we are going to take the Moth Slasher first. All right, so just do as much damage as you can to it, hopefully before it gets off its main attack right here. Once that happens, you're going to start focusing on the bombs. But remember, they will start to self-destruct when they get to 50% HP, so it's important to take them out as fast as possible. Once we get over to Ramu, I am going to be slowing down the fight so you guys can better see what's happening. All right, and I am going to leave it on semi right here. All right, right off the bat, I'm going to use Matt, heal everyone to full. Matt is our primary healer. That is what he should be doing the majority of the fight. All right. In the meantime, I'm just going to start DPSing him as much as possible while Matt is keeping everyone topped off. I don't like to let my HP get below 50% or 80% in these games um, if possible. Now, we are trying to reduce his lightning gauge here, so I'm going to keep on hammering him with some attacks right here in an attempt to break it down. Right before he casts, I'm going to cast Amulet Tribute. Oh, I forgot to block right here. Don't forget to block the big attacks or else they can hurt you. So I'm going to take a good amount of damage from this. Woo, all right, so I'm going to have to pull myself back from that. All right, so I'm going to get off a heal, but we are going to be able to recover from that. Okay, in the meantime, I'm going to interrupt his attack with Sled Fang, lower his physical magic attack right here. This is going to buy us a little bit of time right now since I interrupted his motion. All right, and now we're just going to go for the Sigil Breaks right here. I'm going to focus on Red 13 because he's the one that has the break. Once you get, you want to get rid of Triangle as fast as you can because these Diamond ones, um, they only go down by one per cast. So always use your three ATB Materia to do your damage as quickly as you can to break this in time. All right, here we go. Perfect. I'm going to get off a heal right here. And now we're just going to focus on doing as much damage as we can. With Glenn, he does have the break right there, the physical defense up to high tier. So he is going to be doing some great damage. As you can see, we already have the boss close to half health, if not under. All right, once he summons his little guys, um, we're just going to take them out one at a time. His little guys, his sparks, if you will. All right. It's better to take out adds as quickly as you can in this, unless you have the major DPS to just kill Ramu in this state, which I'm guessing most of you guys do not. So we are going to take out the adds first. 
Alright, once the adds are down, we are just going to go back to damage. Matt is going to heal everyone back up to full. Alright. And let's hopefully break this gauge in time. Alright, here's another uh, sigil break, which is going to be very important that we break before it uh, finishes right here. Alright, let's go. And it looks like we should be good. Once this finishes, we should be able to make a run. If you don't break this gauge, you can see his lightning gauge is very filled up right there. It will do a ton of damage and likely wipe your entire team. All right, here we go. So this is it, guys. We're running into the end game right here. We're just going to focus on damage. Matt is going to remove our magic defense down. All right. And we are just going to focus as much as we can on doing damage. I will put another physical defense debreak on Ramu. And at the same time, we're going to focus on just doing as much damage as we can. Here comes the Judgment Bolt. We are going to need to kill Ramu before this goes off because that lightning uh, buff is so high right there. All right, and there you have it. If I wasn't going to kill him right there, I was going to cast Sled Fang, Gigantic Shield, and uh, Glenn's Limit Break, which should kill him. But if it doesn't, it will lower his uh, offenses, raise our defenses, and give us the best chance of actually blocking that last Judgment Bolt. All right, guys. Well, if this video was helpful for you guys, or if you guys have any... Um, recommendations for videos in the future or things that you guys just want to see. I'm happy to hear it. Don't forget to drop a comment. If this video was helpful for you guys today, uh, don't forget to drop a like on the video. And if you're keen for future content, don't forget to sub to the channel. That being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.